Hello, shalom, shalom, Rastafari. Again, this is uh, 11, 11, 11, or the Friday, and we're about to get into this week's sabbatical portion known as uh, Wayera, and it's actually the 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 fifth, the actually the fourth. You could have the fourth weekly Torah portion or part of Shah. It's the fourth weekly Torah portion or part Shah in our annual Hebraic cycle of Torah readings, or what we know, Bamarinya in the Amharic, the Royal Amharic, as the Orit Nebab, Orit for Torah and Nebab for reading. And it constitutes Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 to Genesis chapter 22, verse 24. Now, we as Hebrews, as black Hebrews, and as Beta Israel and Let Rastafari, we read and study it on the fourth Sabbath and in the fourth sabbatical week after the Simchat Torah or the joy of the law, the joy of Jah's law, which generally occurs in October or November. And this is the very time and the season and the reason for the season. Now, a little bit of background on this, and we're going to continue with um, uh, Rastafari, the, the self-examination, as well as um, Rastafari, the, the meditation. You understand know the meditation that we have touched on in, in the lead-in to this particular sabbatical, this week's um, sabbatical or Torah portion, reading and um, reading and feeding. Now, the Jews, both us and the others, the OJs as we call them, they also read parts of this part of Shah or portion or Kufal, Bamarinya in the Mark, we call that a Kufal. A Kufal means a part or a portion as Orita Nebab or Torah readings for the Aras Hasana or Arosh Hashana. Genesis 21 is the Torah reading, the Orit Nebab, for the first day of Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year. And Genesis 22 is the Torah portion or the Torah reading for the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Now, in modern and um, Eurocentric uh, reform, what they call Reform Judaism, Genesis chapter 22 is the Torah reading for the one day of Rosh Hashanah. So in Reform, um, modern Reform Judaism, they only observe one particular day. Now we've, we've taught that actually Rosh Hashanah is connected with the Yom Teruah or the feast or the festival of, of trumpets. And this is something that um, the OJs don't, don't um, properly observe in their form of um, Judaism. But for us, it is a, a um, monesity that we keep the seven feasts or the Moedim of Yahweh Eloheinu right and exact. Now, this particular portion deals with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's interesting, both the Torah portion for this week, the day, the, this is the Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath Eve of, of the Shabbat, right now, 11-11, November 11th, 2011. And this particular Torah portion, which contains uh, the following summary contents, it contains Abraham's three visitors. That's the first part. There's these three visitors or from the Ethiopic perspective, they call this um, uh, Selase Be Abraham Beit, or the Trinity in the house of Abraham, or in the family of Abraham. Second part is Abraham, he bargains with Ha Elohim, he bargains in a sense with God. Thirdly, is Lot's lot to visitors, is Abraham's worldly and fleshy uh, relative, Lot, 
is the is the nephew of Abraham. He has two visitors. These are two of the three visitors. N the next part, the fourth part, or the fourth summary topic, is Lot bargains with the Sodomites. So, so we see a contrast between the character of the spiritual Abraham and the character of his fleshy Lot. And this is a continuation from last week's Torah portion, Reading and Feeding. So if you haven't checked that out, if you can get the time or opportunity, either, either download it or either um, get it from our YouTube's Ethiopian World Net channel, and um, it will help establish some of the contrast in the background. Because we touched on Lot before about how Lot represents that worldly or fleshy, the worldly or fleshy one, and what we can learn from Abraham's, we can say, in a sense, incomplete obedience to the call from last week's Torah portion to come out of Ur of the Chaldees in the portion that is named in the Hebrew Leka Lika or Teleite Wika. In other words, separate yourself and to come out. He was told to separate himself from his country, his kindred, and his father's house. And it took him many stages before he completely did that. And as he did, then the full blessing of Yahweh Eloheinu came upon him and upon his true house. And this is a lesson for many of us because we also have received a spiritual call. But in that immature state or that beginner state, we still are wrestling with a lot of, a lot of fleshy relatives, other sort of things and times in, 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 in the world, dealing with the worldly and the fleshy perspective or fleshy to say relatives, um, those who are blood relation to us but may not be spiritual relations to us. So Lot, he bargains with the Sodomites, which is a contrast to the second um, bullet point where Abraham, he bargains with God. Now the fifth portion or bullet point is the flight of Lot how Lot was told to, to come out and to flee Sodom and Gomorrah. Then we have a uh, wife as sister, once again in this portion as well, a wife as sister or sister wife. The seventh matter is the birth of Yishak, the birth of Isaac. The eighth matter is the expulsion of Agar or Agar, Hagar, then the ninth portion is um, Ber Sabe or Ber Sheba, the well of the oath, the well of the covenant, because uh, Sheba or Shiva, Shiva, Sheba, Saba, Seba, relates to the, the number seven, as in uh, Sebat and Seba, or 70, as well as in the Hebraic sense to covenant. Covenant in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. If you want to get a better background on these on these key words and names, then look up Bereshiba. It'll be a very interesting read, and it might help to further illuminate the proper context of this particular reading and where the word, the, the particular Hebrew name, um, might be found somewhere in the Scripture. Um, is what we advise, and, it, and, it's, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a key, because how can you read something and it has a name there and you don't understand the proper context of the name, and this comes from a so-called culture or tradition, which is a thousand years or, or more separate from this modern Babylonian so-called way of <laughs> way of so-called life or survival that we are um, living or passing through and experiencing. Now, now the tenth matter, the tenth matter, the tenth matter is the binding of Yishak, is the binding of Isaac. So these are the ten, the ten subject matters that is contained in this, the fourth, the fourth Rastafari Sabbath, 
scrolls or sabbatical study on this Torah portion, reading and feeding, that's known by as Tegalet Alet, and in the, the Hebraic as Vayera or Vayera, Vayera, which means, and he appeared, and he revealed, and he appeared. Now, let's get into this, and, and, and let's bring this up right here. Let's go into this, and we're going to return, y'all willing, to the teaching on um, self-examination as well as, 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 well as uh, meditation, meditation and self-examination, which, which are key prerequisites. So this portion begins at 18, Genesis 18, chapter 1. Now, hopefully, if you're seeking to discipleship with I and I, hopefully you have um, the Schofield Reference Bible. And if you don't have a hard copy, once again, you can get it from www.lojsociety.org. Um, you can download it from there and go to the studies page. And there's some information also on the first page as well as, as um, our Sabbath uh, house reading guide as well. I think we had actually put that up. Perhaps it's in the next in the next bay. But anyway, um, most of y'all should be familiar with that, but you can go to the website, Sabbath um, House Reading, as well as the Schofield uh, Reference Bible, and you can utilize it on your computer, your tablet, or other mobile device or smartphone. Now, if you are looking at the Schofield Reference Bible, and at Genesis chapter 18, you see it says, Abraham, quote, the friend of God, End quote. This is this is this is how this first um, portion, this first portion right here um, begins. And also, once again, to recommend the uh, uh, Wikipedia, the Wikipedia page has some interesting and useful um, information there as well. Try to suffer the whitewash, um, the whitewash Eurocentric pictures. For now, but get familiar with the contents. You understand? With the contents. Now, here it says, And Yahweh appeared to him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, look, look and see, here it is. Three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. He prostrated, he worshipped, and said, My Lord, my Lord, Adonai, my Lord, or some say, Adonai, my Lord. If now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts, after that ye, you all, shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And he said, so do, as thou hast said. So Yahweh responded, or we can say the great angel, or the, the, the one who was leader of this trinity, basically said to Abraham, so do, as as thou hast said, in other words, do do what you do what you you have said that you're going to do. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, "Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth or or the the cooking the fireplace." And Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it to a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf 
which he had dressed, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said to him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, Behold, look and see, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to thee according to the time of life. And lo, look, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am wax old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord, being old also, she called her husband Adoni. She called him Gieta. And the New Testament says that the faithful daughters do likewise, which is, which is a very important point, and we'll teach on it, y'all willing. But this is what she said. And the Lord, or yod heh wow -Hey, Yahweh, said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for Yahweh? Is there anything too hard? At the appointed time, I will return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah, Sarah, denied, saying, I laugh not. For she was afraid. And he said, and remember this he is Yahweh. This he, some say, and, and there's a lot of um, interbiblical and interlinear discussion on from the Jewish and the Christian perspective of was this he Yahweh? Was it the angel of the Lord, like Michael, who was like the Lord? Um, was it the Lord as an angel? Was it the pre-incarnate Christ, the Moshiach, who actually spoke? But what the text is clear about, that there was the Trinity, these three, came to Abraham on one intent, and that one of them who spoke was the Lord, or is, according to Moses' first book, is spoken of as the Lord or as Yahweh. Now, Sarah, in verse 15, she denies, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh, but thou did laugh. Now, what's interesting is this. If you read the New Testament of the incarnate Yehoshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Adonenu, Getachin, you will find that he seems to do the same thing. Now, when it says that she spoke in herself, it almost reminds me when Christ, the Bible would say in the Gospels, that he knew their thoughts. He, he knew their intent. He knew their thoughts. And sometimes he would speak to their soul. And, 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 and some of them would, be, would, would respond, not knowing that they didn't say these things outwardly, but he already knew this is what they were thinking on. And we get this Old Testament prefiguring of the, of the Christ or of Yehoshua in this example of Salase be Abraham Beit. Now, Sarah, she wasn't, she wasn't, she wasn't bad by no means. She, she, she's our mother. She's our mother. She, she's the mother of our faith, as Galatians would say as well. But what is interesting, it explains that she denied because she was afraid. And she had also heard this proclamation, and she was looking at it from the natural. And see, this is this is this is goes to the very heart of what we've been um, seeking to speak and minister on. She was looking at it from the natural. You understand? And saying, "I'm old. A lot of time has passed, so forth and so on. My husband is old. We get we don't have no child after all this. I'm going to have a child at this time. You, you see? So it." It doesn't question 
It doesn't question the veritas or, or the truth of Yahweh of Egizyabi Herlotu Subhat, but it's really the question on us. And, and if we compare that with the whole aspect of um, when we were talking about self, self-examination, self-examination, and um, looking at ourselves by seeing ourselves in clear light. She wasn't seeing herself in clear light, but she probably would have thought, like a lot of us do think, well, I'm looking at the reality because we have faith in the world. What's so amazing, those who can't get this, get the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ and the true Christ man or Christian way of life is because they already have a religion. They already have a God. The God is the God of the world. You know what I'm saying? That has blinded them from receiving the gospel and the good news. They are not seeing these matters in a clear light. They need to eliminate negativity and doubt. And this was polluting at some level the relationship of Father Abraham and Sarah, because the thing that they sought was a child, you understand? And they didn't have a child, you understand? Now they have been given blessings and prophecy from, from the Almighty about how they're going to be blessed and, 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 and father of multitude and so forth and so on. And he's thinking like, like, yeah, but the only one who would be an heir in my house if I were to die right now is Eliazar, um, Lazarus, or, or El Osar, who, who is my servant. You understand? Know He's the only one that's in the position. He was looking at things as they were in that temporal time, but not recognizing that, that the caduce, uh, Seleus Caduce, or the triune God, is both he who was, he who is, and he who is to come. And these three states of time that seem linear to us all exist at one and the same time from the divine mind. So that wasn't too impossible with him. And he asks this key question that gets repeated throughout the scriptures. Is anything too hard in me, sano negar? You understand? Is there anything too hard for Yahweh, for Egezi Abihir? Now, at verse 16, what is very interesting is when we get to verse um, 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 16, and, and just looking at the summary right here, we get to verse 16. It begins now the, the section where Abraham, where he um, bargains with God, or he bargains with this visitor. This is what we're told that they were three visitors or according to Genesis 18 it says, and Yahweh and Jehovah and Egeziabihir, the sustainer of the light of the firstborn chosen nation appeared to him in the plains of Mamre and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes. When he lifted up his eyes, Abraham, as, as, as many do in Africa and Ethiopia and certain places, you'll notice that there's, there's a tree usually, like a main tree where the elders of the community or certain ones will have a particular tree that they would go to for shade and for shelter. No, no strange type of religion or spiritual kind of r- ritual thing. They would just sit under the tree because it's, in the natural, it's a shade. You understand? And, 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 and they'll sit by that tree and, and they'll meditate. They'll think about their life. They, they will self examine themselves and, and, and what's going on. It's obvious that he was probably was in a, a meditation or, or, or a, a kind of a prayer mode or mentality. And now when he lifted up his eyes, he looked and look, there were three men that stood by him. Now he looks up and sees these three men standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. Now, here's what's so interesting. It says that they stood by him. The three men stood by him. And when he saw he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. 
he bowed himself towards the ground. So we have to look at this and see to, okay, now, where was they probably standing and where was he? Because it says that, that he sat in the tent door. You understand? He sat in the tent door. Now, the, where we get the tree from, the word the tree, is that when it says the plains of Mamre, if you read this in the Hebrew and even in the Ethiopic, it is not plains like a, like, like a flat land. It really says that it is a tree. And let's touch on this right here, Bamarinya. Let's look at chapter 18 and just read a portion of this for this 11, 11, 11. Um, sabbatical right here. And it says, um, Besama'ab, where will it manifest it? Kedus, Ahadu, Ahadu Amlak. Let's get into this right here. From the King of Kings, the Met of Kedus, Orit, Orit, Ze Fitaret. Mi'raf asara cement. Bek eterim magize arusu bedina kwanu de jafa tek emto sale. Egeziabihara be memreya. Ya adabar zafa tegelet let. So here says Bek eterim magize. Roughly one can say at, at noon time. Arusu bedin kwanu de jafa tek emet he by his tents, the entrance, the gateway to his tent tek emet he sat sale while he sat egazi abe herabe memoriam ya adabar zafa tegalet let that the sustainer Yahweh be memore in memories ya adabar zaf was revealed to him in the tree of of Adbar, of the Adbar Zav. Now, the Adbar Zav is very interesting because we touched on this in some of our uh, earlier videos. If you look at the Oromo, one of the, the main Ethiopian tribal groups of Ethiopia, they have their own campaign and, and, and their own agenda, but they are said to be some of the indigenous inhabitants, some say, at least is their claim, of the land, much like Mamre was, I think, an Amorite as well, which was a part of the Canaanites, but he was one who um, was at peace with our father, Abraham, and Abraham bought a, a, a portion of land, even though the land was already promised to Abraham and his descendants, Abraham being a righteous man and a patient man, he bought a portion of land. There's an example in that for us as well, because some would say, well, if it is our land, why do we have to buy it from the inhabitants? Well, the Bible says, be wise. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. That is to show wisdom right there. So it says that, that he revealed himself to him, to Abraham, in Mamre's tree of the Adbar. And the Adbar is like the oak tree. On the Oromo flag, on the Oromo flag, you will see that it has the Aranguade, Bicha, and the K, or we'll have the green, the yellow, and the red. And in the center portion, there's a, there's a tree. There's a tree. And you can see this Adbar Zaf on some of the um, tribal national flags of some of the peoples in that Middle Eastern, East Africa region. Um, I think, um, is it the, not the Syrians or the Palestinians, there are others who also have a tree, this particular type of oak tree, or what's called the Elim, the Elim tree. And some have made a connection between the Elim, the, the word Elim in the Hebrew, and Elohim. So some say it's a God tree. So there were certain trees that were considered 
even from such a time and even in Torah, to be divine or spiritual in their nature or relationship with some of the central areas and ideas of the scripture. So how be it they persecute I and I Rastafari for our sacramental um, rights of burning ganja or the marijuana. Let's call it the marijuana for now, since ganja leads in, the, in another sort of tradition, uh, a East Indian tradition, that we have to kind of weed out certain things from, we call it Yamariam it, in the words, the tree or the herb of Mariam, the herb of Mary, because of the pun or the 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 Inkokalish of the name Maryam and Aryam. And Aryam is a spiritual abstraction or otherwise known as a height because it's a tree of or herb of heights and higher heights for those who receive it correctly. But it goes on to say, by yacho wim gize lik ebalacho, kadin kwa nu de jafa tenesto rote, ode midarima segede, indihim ale abetu, de fite hisa moges aginche in the hone, baria hina ata lefeng, be a lemonalo, take eat a wuha yemat alacho. Igracho huna tat ebu, kazi hichima zaf betacha irafu, kurasha injerama lamat alachu, lebacho hunima degufu, kazi yam bechwala tehed alachu, selezi he wadabariachu, wadabariachu wa metetacho hwalina. In a resum and ale adriga alut. Now, there's the, the, the key here in verse 5 of King James, of the King James Version, it says, And they said, they said, almost they spoke collectively. This is another key of, of, of the Jewish or the Hebraic Selassie, the Hebraic. Trinity or the Trinity, Selassie be Abraham be. They said, and say one said, but they said, in in dalih adarig alut, as you say, do do as you say, in dalih adarig, in dalih adarig alut. Abraham me maude din kwan ode Sarah zena fet no gebana. Sosta mesaferia yete selek duketa fetnesha zegaji lo shum ina gochama dergi alat Abraham maure lamo churote ijiga yese bama tanashat ija yazena leblate na wal seto. Yaziga jim zenam te chakole, te chakole. Urugona wetetima yaziga jo nemat ija meta. Besita cho wima karebo. Arusuma kazafu betach befita cho wak omenebaram. En arusuma bellu. Now, that's the first portion of the reading. That's the first bait from verse 1 to verse 8. Now, this is the second portion. Now, this is, this is more or less the way in, in communal, in communal or mikorab or the synagogue, when one goes up for the aliyah, you understand, or when one becomes of age, like the rite of passage, one goes up for the reading of the respective Torah portion or what we call a bait, like a paragraphical, such as the first paragraphical that was just read, and this is the second paragraphical or bait, Kutera Zetain Iski Kutera Sara 
on this from verse 9 to verse 15. So we can now catch up with um, 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 now the, the, the Amharic or the Royal Amharic and then compare it with the King James Version for some of the key nuances. So the second um, portion of this week's Torah reading in them below, it, it speaks or reads like this. In the Rasul, Nistehe Sara, were they not? Alut, Arusum, Bedin Kwanu wist a not, Alacho, Arusum, Yezare a met in the Zareua Gize, no water ante bonete melasalo, Nistehe Sara maligina tagenya lech, Ale. Saram medin kwan de jaffa besta khalawa salech yihinna samach abrahamna saram be idme achowa shamiglowa fetsmowa arjito nabar beseto chemihon wimal man ka sarat kwarto nabar Saram belibwa in the acetilla sakech. Carriage who behalla, be wunu a fito at a yohona linyalin. Get a ye muffets a moa shemigalo alam. Egazi abe heram abrahamina alo. Kare jehu be khala be wunu we wala dalun sitil sara lemena sakech be wunu legezi ave her yemia sano negara alen yezare ametinda zare ugize wede ante mel salo sara maligina tagenya lech Saram Sileferach Alla Sakum Sitilla Kadech Arisum Aidelem Sakishinji Alat. He said, Aidelem. He said, No, <laughs> but you did laugh. You did laugh. And the beautiful thing about Sarah and all true daughters of, of Sarah. She didn't argue. She she didn't argue. You don't hear any argument. She didn't do no neck rolling. She didn't do no like who are you anyway? You eat my food. She didn't go through none. She didn't go through any of that. Basically, we now move to the next portion where concerning Sodomina Gamora or Gomorrah. Interesting because Gamora Bamarinya in the Ethiopic Gamora means volcano. It means actually in the language volcano, so Sodom and the volcano. So when we go to the Ethiopic root, all of this discussion of, well, what really happened in Sodom and Gomorrah is explained to us when we put matters in the proper context. So the next portion of this, we're going to deal with Abraham bargaining with Ha Elohim in this Salase the Abraham bait or the Trinity in the house of Abraham. So my brothers and sisters, once again, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. Let us pray for one another. Watch and pray, and stay tuned. More to come, Yah willing. Shalom, Ras Tefari. Ine, Wendem, Yadin, Wendem, Achu.